A graphical user interface, or GUI for short, is a way to prompt users to provide the arguments needed for a script in a way that's easier for them to understand than running the tool in an IDE or command line environment. The image on the right shows a simple GUI that was created by an ArcGIS script tool. It tells the user that the first box is for selecting a workspace. It also provides a button so that they can go out and browse to a workspace. And when they're browsing, they will only be allowed to, to select items that are acceptable as a workspace. And there are two other choices that they need to make. The user doesn't need to read comments in the script or know how to run Python Win in order to run the tool that's behind this. ArcGIS script tools are a means for you, the programmer, to create graphical user interfaces for your Python scripts without having to learn about the complex libraries that are available for GUI. This video introduces ArcGIS script tools, their relationship with the Python scripts they are built for, how to create the script tools, and how to use them. Also, that topic of relative paths reemerges. After this lesson, there are several follow-up lessons about setting the parameters in script tools. If you learn enough about script tools and their cousins, the Python toolboxes, you can make dynamic interfaces that can really help your users run your scripts more effectively. What is a script tool and why are we using that as opposed to, say, TK or something like that. A script tool is one of those ESRI terms. It can help you create custom GUIs pretty quick. That a GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. So it just means we're, we're not requiring the person to use Python Win or something to run our tool. We're going to create something that has a nice picture so it helps them browse to files and that kind of thing. So it won't be as onerous for them to learn how to use your tool because it has instructions with it. Our textbook also contains a lesson on TK file dialog, which is a built-in module that can be used for creating GUIs. It's pretty nice because you can write one or two lines of code, import the module, and then write one line of code to create a simple GUI. The good thing about it is you can use it if you're, if you're not using ArcGIS and you want to create, say, an open source tool or something like that. It's a really quick way to make something that allows people to browse to files. Um, and it's um, pretty simple to learn. And you don't need ArcPy. The book only covers browsing to files and folders because those functions are pretty simple. And as you try to make more com complex GUIs, like the kinds of GUIs we're going to make with the ArcGIS script tools, the TK file dialog gets a lot more complex very quickly. So it's a kind of a steeper learning curve, as well as other GUI libraries that are native to Python, like WX Python and PyQt. Those are not ArcPy related, and they're, they're really powerful. You can make very interesting GUIs with those, but there's a steep learning curve. So we would need a few more extra weeks of class to go into those. That's why we're talking about script tools that are pretty easy to create and learn how to create quickly. And you can use them. They're, they're also nice because they're in tune with GIS data. So they have functionality for things like, say you need people to pick out rasters for your project, like grid rasters. So with a WX Python, having to browse to something like that is going to be complicated to code or to restrict the user so that they only get the choices that they could that would be valid for that. It would be complicated to code that. But with script tools, because it's built for GIS interfaces, it's got capability to say, I want to I specify that the user can only pick a file geodatabase for input, or a raster grid, or a shapefile, or something like that. And it will it'll easily create the, the GUI for you that you need. Of course, the, the cons are if you're not using ArcGIS, then, then this is, you're going to have to have it for the GUI.
Also, it's not really made for making wizards, you know, wizards where you have a something pop up and then you fill something in and then you say next and then you go to the next screen and, it, you know, it's not really made for that. To create a script tool, you need three things. You need a Python script, that'll be what the script tool is pointing to, and you need a custom toolbox. So, you know, there's built-in toolboxes, but you can also make your own toolbox. And then you also need to figure out, oh, you, need, you need to plan your shopping list. What do you want the, to get from the user? What, what's your list of desired script parameters? A list of things that you want to get from the user. So to create a script tool, this is the way I, I like, I'd like you to do it, is to browse to the desired directory in our catalog and then right click and say new toolbox um, there's a way to create a new toolbox from the menu or something, but then it puts it in a default location and people never understand where it is. So if you actually actively like, go to the place where you want it and right click and say new toolbox, then you've got it where you want it and you understand. There's going to be a, a .tbx file that that creates out there. So then once you're inside the toolbox, or once you have your new toolbox, you can right click and say add uh, script. And then, then you can just step through the wizard. We're going to go into some details on how to use the, how to set up that script. But if you just go and, and say OK and finish and do all the defaults, you'll have a script tool. It won't do anything, but you'll have one. The best way to really understand script tools and how to make them is to try making one yourself. So in this exercise on the in-class page called Create a Script Tool, you're going to use a, a Python script that's already provided, run it, just see how it works, and then you're going to create a custom toolbox, and inside of that, you're going to create a script tool. In this particular example, you're not actually going to use any parameters yet, so the parameter list is nothing, but in a later when you'll practice making the parameters. So let's get started. Skip to the one that says create a script tool. Get some hands-on experience. So first we are going to grab a script from one of the sample script directories and put it into the scratch directory. And then we'll open it up and run it just to see what the script is doing. So we see on line five, we have a hard-coded path to a directory that has some data in it. Just ran the script and it printed out a list of text files that it found. So it did an os.lister and if the file ended with .txt, it printed that out. We're just going to go into that directory that we had hard-coded and sort by type and then, yep, so that list that you see here is the same. There are seven files listed here. So it seems to be working as expected. Now I'm going to go over and open our catalog and browse to the scratch directory in our catalog just because we want to put our toolbox somewhere temporary and then we're gonna create a toolbox there if you if you browse your directory and create the toolbox then you know where the toolbox is it doesn't put it in that default directory so it's kind of nicer to do it this way just renaming the tool and we're going to add a script tool to it you just go down right click on the toolbox and and click Add Script. So now we're naming and labeling the tool. The label is the thing that shows up in the table of contents. Uh, usually it's good to make that match the name itself. The name is used when you are doing some programmatic things with it. Well, we'd see it when we get into Python toolboxes. 
You can write a description. This will show up when you launch the tool, but you know, the default's a blank. Now make sure to click store relative path names instead of absolute paths. And this is going to apply to how it points to our script, our actual Python script. So we're going to go out and browse to that Python file that we moved to Dispy Scratch earlier. It's called a text lister. Okay, so now we can we could set some parameters, but for this tool, we're just going to, to leave the parameters to be blank. In other words, the user won't have the opportunity to enter anything, just like the script. And in Python, we didn't run it with any arguments. This will run with no arguments. That is the toolbox properties. What we really wanted to look at was the script tool properties, just to show you that you can get back to where you were in that wizard by right-clicking and selecting properties you have all the option to change all those things that we changed before, and you also have some additional options like the validation tab. We have our script tool, just like we said we would name it. And now if we, we wanna run it, we can just double click on that tool and uh, we didn't have to resize it, but then then we we get this. this uh, on the left, it says this tool has no parameters. On the right, it has the description that we just wrote up on the first page of the wizard. So if we click OK, we're running the script tool, which launches, which runs the Python script. Now you notice that when you run this, it prints some things out. It prints executing print text files start time, run running script, and I like pi. Completed script, succeeded at, and it gives a time. So this, this window is, we call it the geoprocessing window. It's what launches when the script has finished running, when the script tool finishes running uh, the script. And notice what it has printed out in there is different from what we printed when we ran the script in the, uh, in the IDE. So we listed all those text files when it ran there, and it didn't list any text files. It just had this kind of generic information about the script tool running, and it had the phrase, and I like pi. So the question is, can you hypothesize why there's a difference? Can you make out from looking at the example that we did, why is there this difference in the statements that are printed out by the script tool in the geoprocessing window and by the Python script in the interactive window? Now, if you guess that statements that are printed with the Python keyword print are printed in the interactive window, but not in the geoprocessing window, and statements that are printed with the arcpy method add message are printed in the geoprocessing window, but not the interactive window, then you're correct. So the, the trick is that when you use a print statement in Python, the print statement will go, say, if you're running a, a Python, you can actually run a Python script in the command line, for example. Or you can run it in Python Win or PyScriptor. And the print statement, whatever you put there, will print out in your interactive window or in your command line. But if you run it in, in a script tool, you're going to find that those print statements don't appear. <laughs> and so you have to use the, the arcpy.add message to get your script tool output to print into the, it, there's a little window. When you run a ArcGIS tool, you know, there's a little window that pops up while it's running. You'll have one of those for, cus, for the custom tool that you create, and, and that's where the add message messages will, will print out, but the print statements won't print there. Your script tools, as you're developing them, you should debug the script itself in a, a real debugger, like out in Python Win or PyScriptor. You should develop your tool out there, and you probably want your print statements, your 
regular print statements for that. Usually when you, when you create a script tool, it, it's a good idea to just add a function like this, which, is, which I called print arc, which would print whatever message you're wanting to print, both in native Python print statement and in the add message. So then, then either way, when you're working with it outside, you've got the print statement. And when you're working with in the, inside the script tool, you've got the add message statement. So the way this function works is you just call that function and pass in whatever string that you want to print. And then it'll, it'll do it both ways. Just a simple thing that you can dump into your script and, and use when you're developing these. The, and I like pi message. You saw that in your example you were running. That only printed out when you ran the script tool. Once you have a script tool, you can create a button for it. You can do that by following these steps. It's under the customized menu. And you have to, you have to roll all the way down to the bottom of this command. Uh, there's a geoprocessing tools thing. And you select that, and you'll see it in the list. And then you can drag it and drop it up there. In part two of this exercise, you can practice adding a button to access the tool that you just created. Go to the Customize menu, Customize mode, and click on the Commands tab. Let that thing populate. It takes a moment. Then roll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see Geoprocessing Tools in the square braces. Click on that. And that is where you get the opportunity to add your tool. You have to browse to it. So you have to go inside the toolbox and select the script tool itself. Now we've added that as uh, one of the geoprocessing tools available. Now we can drag it and drop it onto a menu. I'm just showing that in, unless you're in between some existing buttons, you cannot drop that thing. Whenever you see that little black line, that's when you're able to insert it. But otherwise, you, you can't. If you let go of it, it won't appear on your menu. So now, before you, when you have the Customize window open still, you can change settings for that. If you close the Customize window, you'd have to open it again to do the settings. So here we're modifying the image to everybody's favorite one, which is a little fox or a kitty or something. And you can also make the text appear, the label on the button. And you can modify that. Now you test your button to see if it works. There's kind of a little problem with the menus folding over, but okay. So we clicked on it and our tool ran just like it did when we ran it the other way. As you were going through the wizard, you selected a Python script, right, to point to. It was test lister, text lister. So you want to think of the script tool as a pointer to a Python script. So that means that the, when this becomes important is when you want to move it around and share it with other people. The fact that it's just pointing to the script. So if you were to, if you create a script tool that points to a script and then remove the script or move the script, it's, it, huh? Or rename it, it's going to, the script tool will no longer work, right? Because it's really pointing, it's pointing to that uh, Python script. This is when it becomes important to understand relative paths. So that if you have your script in the same directory as your script tool, then when you share your script tool with someone else or move it to another machine, you make sure you get the entire directory that has both the script tool and the script and use the choice that says 
use relative paths in there. Another thing is that script tools, if you go into Windows Explorer, you know, you look at ctemp in your regular Windows Explorer, you don't see the script tool itself, right? You see the tbx file, wherever that is, and you see the .py file, but the script tool itself is, is encoded within the tbx file, so, so you don't see that, but you have to you have to keep that toolbox and make sure that goes wherever you want it to go with the, for, with the script tool in it. So to share a script tool, you must copy the tbx file and the script, use a relative path, and then use the, the use relative path checkbox must be checked and they have to be in the same relative position. So if you have your, uh, your toolbox in ctemp, your script itself under a, you know, in a code directory underneath of that, ctemp code, then you would need to grab all of that and make sure you have a code directory underneath wherever it is that you put your, your new position for your script tool or, and your toolbox. So, yeah, so script tools are just a GUI interface for scripts. Now we'll do another in-class exercise in which you explore the relationship between script tools and the scripts themselves that they point at. We'll see how easy it is to break a script tool by either moving the script to a different relative position or renaming it, and how easy it is to repair a script tool just by making sure that the script is in the same relative position to the script tool as it was when the, school, when the script tool was initially set up. This exercise relies on you having done the previous exercise. So we're talking about the script tool that you already created. Go ahead and try that one out. Okay. So we're just double checking that we have the script tool. It should be pointing to now just pi scratch text lister dot pi. Now we're going to go and open up text lister, make a change to that. We're going to add another arcpy.add message command, which says, I like kale. Others may have differing opinions. Now let's run the script tool again. So notice you see that I like, I like kale statement printout. That means that you've made a change in the script and the script tool, when you run it, makes that change as well. That's because it's just pointing to that script that you, uh, that you just modified. So there's no need to change the script tool itself when you make a, script, a change in the script that it's pointing to. You should see the update occur automatically when you run the, the script tool. Now let's try changing the name of textlister to textlister2.py and try out, we've got our ArcMap button up, oh, and we get an error, which means that the script failed to run. Let's try it, make sure it wasn't just arc map. Try running it in arc catalog. It's the same thing. We're pointing at the same script tool, but just to show that it, it gives you the same error. It says that specifically that the script associated with this tool does not exist. According to this script tool, that script is completely gone, just because it's not smart enough to know it was renamed. So now if we change it back, Run it again, boom, it works again. Okay, we can double check our arc map button. Yep, works. Now let's try and break our script tool in another way. 
I'm just gonna change that directory. We try to break their script tool by moving the script to a different directory. So the script tool still exists, still has the same name, but we're gonna create a subdirectory called break stuff. And we're gonna move text lister into that subdirectory. There it is. So now let's try running our script tool again. Sure, we can run it in ArcMap. Boom, we get the error that this script does not exist. Even though we know it does, it just doesn't know where it lives. We're gonna do same thing, our catalog, error, error. So what about if we move the toolbox itself and the script itself? In our original configuration, when we set it up, how was the, what was the relative path from the script tool to the script itself? Do you remember? We put the toolbox in our catalog in uh, the Scratch directory, just by Scratch. And we also had the text lister Python script in the Scratch directory as well. That means the relative path says that they're in both in the same place. So we just copied and pasted, or moved, sorry, rather moved our uh, toolbox to the documents directory. And now we're going to, uh, we're going to connect to that directory. Oops, uh, yeah, doesn't like that one. I have to go to my documents. So when we go to documents and try to run the script tool, it's broken. But that's because it can't find the script. So let's go ahead and copy the script tool from break stuff to, actually we're gonna move it to the documents directory. So we'll have the same, it'll be in the same directory, same relative path. So we say, okay, run it. Yeah, it works this time. So we've fixed it because we have the same relative path. So the take home messages from this are, script tools don't appear in the Windows Explorer. They are part of the toolbox. Since a script tool points to a script, you can change the script and see the updates immediately when they run the tool. There's no going and saving the script tool or something like that. Uh, if you rename, move or remove, the underlying script, the script tool will be broken. For portability, you need to check the store relative path names uh, when you set up the tool and the wizard it's on the first page. Then copy the toolbox and the script maintaining the relative path. So if it's in, if it one's in a directory that's a subdirectory of the other, you have to get that whole directory and so forth. Script tools don't have a debugger. So if you're creating one of those, it's important to test your script thoroughly outside of your script tool before you even start creating your script tool. And then while you're developing your script tool, if you change your script, run it again outside in another IDE. A simple way to maintain relative paths is to set up the script tools and the scripts in the same directory and then just pass that directory on. Summing up, script tools are graphical user interface front ends for the scripts. You can create a script tool inside of a toolbox, and you've got to use the print statement for printing outside of the script tools and the add message method for printing inside of the geoprocessing window. Usually you want to use relative paths and maintain them in order to share your tools with others. Next, we'll learn about how to create those parameters that will allow you to provide input through your graphical user interface script tool.